and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Roll call. Thomas Wynn. Here. Mary Ann Rosa. Here. David Demers. Here. Anthony Devona. Here. Case Duplessy. Kathleen Ramo. Here. Jonathan Ramsey. Here. Louis Raza. Here. Paul Renaud. Here. Okay, public participation. Any members who come to the podium if they have anything to say? Name and address, please. My name is Lori Catanzaro, C A T A N Z A R O. I'm a resident of 18 North Street in Oakville. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about the blight issue and the feral cat issue that we're having at 133 Franklin Avenue. I've lived in the residence for seven years, and for seven years I have complained about the, the blight and the feral cat issue. Um, it was brought to my attention by the state animal control officer that our animal control sets the ordinances on which animals we tend to. We do not have an ordinance that deals with feral cats. My deck has been ruined, which other neighbors also. Um, I used to vegetable garden, can't do that anymore because the cat feces carries a lot of diseases. I have all the paperwork here to show you exactly what diseases these feral cats can carry. The Moody residents, they claim all of these cats as their own. Under law, if they claim them as their own, they have to vaccinate them for rabies at least. None of these cats are vaccinated. We had a rescue site go in last year. Um, she was able to catch four cats, TNR, trap, neuter, release. Um, then they were, the Moody's started letting the cats out of the traps. And then they told them they had to stop because it's private property. We can't go on there and trap cats on our own without her permission. We've had neighbors try to rescue the cats in the winter time. Um, one kitten was rescued that had a piece of metal stuck to its face because it was frozen to it. Um, <clears throat> we had another neighbor who was given one of the kittens. Animal control went down, told her she had to give it back because Donna claimed they were her cats. This house has been top five blight in our town for years. I've been there for seven. Some of my neighbors said they've been com complaining for 18 years. One of my neighbors took initiative and started to remove the four cars that were on the property unregistered, full of garbage. He paid for it, he took care of it. He put two dumpsters on the property, he paid for it, he took care of it. There's holes in the roofs where cats are having kittens, um, and then the kittens are stuck on the roof. Animal Control went out this week and got six kittens down, and those six kittens are now with a rescue that I know. Um, as far as the blight, it goes from inside to outside. The horde is bad. The inside has been reported by one of the officers. Uh, Officer Sturgis went inside. There is rats, there is a horde, there's foul odor coming from the house. Um, Officer Sturgis uh, put that in a report and stated it. But yet, no one called Adult Protective Services. We're mandated by law to call Adult Protective Services, our fire rescue and our police department. I called Adult Protective Services on the 8th of July. They told me I was the first person to ever call them. Fire had to go in there as an emergency call on the, I don't know which day it was, but um, Jeff Lynch was one of the firemen that had to go in for a stroke victim. Dave Moody had a stroke, fell into a horde, then the rest of the horde fell on top of him. They had a, the fire department had a hard time getting into the house um, through the front door to get to the stroke victim. Once he got there, they had to pull him out by his feet out of a horde of garbage. There is no egress out the back door. If a fire was to occur in this house, the fire department cannot go inside this house because it'll be endangering their lives. So something needs to be done. We've been complaining for seven years and I've been told for the last seven years that they're the top five blight in town. Nothing's being done. It, it's continued to happen, and I, I keep hearing, well, there's red tape 
the red tape goes down, 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 down. If I've been complaining for seven years and then I have another neighbor who's been complain complaining for 18 years, where does this resolve us? Where do, where do we find a resolution for this? We've been willing to help these people, offered to help. I've put shelters on their property for the cats and kittens for the winter, but we're at a loss. Got a, got a couple of questions for you. Sure. You said several years for you and 18 years for someone else. Um, who have you been complaining to? And uh, these are all recorded and are this the same people? I've been I mean, in front of the town manager. He knows that I've been in front of him a couple of times. Um, and he's the one that told me that they are top five blight. And I understand he's constricted to the paperwork that they have to do and, and all the fines and, and all the site, the citations okay. they have to give. Go ahead. Through the chair. This has been a blight complaint going on for two or three years that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, They've been given verbal warnings and given copies of the ordinances by an officer, as the chief could tell you. Um, they were sent a certified written warning, a final warning in April. And that's what prompted them to start to cooperate, to get rid of the cars, to get rid of the junk in the yard. Correct. And there's yeah. two people that are helping them. Yeah. They're going to patch the holes in the roof. They're going to take care of some of the other issues. So it's not nothing's not that nothing's being done. There is something being done. No, These are very difficult situations. I, I've never met you before. I don't ever recall you. Um, excuse me, my husband well, and I both have been. Maybe, in, maybe your husband. I don't. I was with my husband. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've been in your office a couple of times. Okay. Um, I'm concerned about, you said protective services and someone had a stroke. When was that? The stroke was about a month and a half ago at the residence. Um, I went and got the last, they would only give me the last two years of uh, reports from that residence. Okay. But I'm not seeing some reports that we've actually made ourselves in there. So I don't know. I've called the police department to talk to AC. Okay. And I would talk to dispatch. Dispatch would put me through to her or put her out on the call to come to our residence. We had two kittens last fall that we had heavy rain that got up underneath my son's wheel well and my son didn't check before he went to work he didn't think of it and when he was back out the driveway he ran over the kittens through the chair what is protective services doing that is that that is my that that is one of my most concerns yes uh, they went to the house um on the 10th of july of july and they were denied access to the house so they went to the police department and asked an officer to do a well-being check. Uh -huh. So I guess Adult Protective Services now is going through the red tape to get the, I guess, a warrant to get into the premises. Okay. All right. So, but right. I, my concern is that I was the first one to call when we're mandated by law, fire, rescue, police, if we see these conditions and the way the people aren't there, we yeah, I, I guess call. the key word is see these conditions and people don't let them in. But I'm glad, I, I, I think, uh, the, I think, pardon me? I'm sorry, but there's reports from the police station that, the that, that, that tell you the conditions inside. Officer Sturgis. Okay. Well, it, it sounds like things are moving forward, and that I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to address the last 17 years. The problem yeah, no. is what I would like to. Is we're moving it forward. No one else is moving it forward. Well, and I thank you, and I commend you for doing that. But I, I, that, that's that's a good thing. We just don't uh, know why the city isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing. That, that's not fair. No, Charlie, that's uh, not true. Look, that's not the, 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 the police that's department. Not true. Uh, they, no, they the couldn't police get in department there. is uh, doing their social job. Social services couldn't get in there. They had to get a police department. So right. it's obviously, uh, even though it's uh, they're doing the, these people that live there can do what they want, and we can't we can't hurt their privacy because of certain laws. Right. And even social services couldn't get in there. My point now is social services is aware. They are, and you are, you said it yourself. They're going through their red tape. Right. And obviously, this is going to probably get into court, a court order, and there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, But my question wasn't that. My question was why mandated reporters in our town, why wasn't it reported to Adult Protective Services? Uh, that, that, you, yeah, I, you, that's you, my you problem. Is you can't. You know, we're, I'm just happy that it's being that that's being it's being uh, addressed now right. and obviously it needs to be addressed it does i don't want to recreate that whole thing because you're, you're you may not get an answer and uh, there's nothing you can do about it it's history i'd like to just to move forward and do this okay and just stay uh, and uh, obviously you will stay on it yes and uh, oh no i'm not stopping okay you, yeah <laughs> i'm not stopping okay that so no, i think that's a question. Question. 
I mean, something needs to be done with this. We can't have these cats roaming around. Our, our deck is inhabitable. They've been living underneath our deck every winter and going to the bathroom underneath there and spraying You can't okay. go on my back I, deck. We can't go on our deck. We cannot okay. use our back deck. Well, I, I've, obviously, we'll have the, the, the town managers aware of it, obviously, and I'll talk to the, uh, I'm sure he'll talk to the chief okay. of police. Just because and, with, uh, as, as a dog it. owner, it's not okay for me to open my front door and let my dog out and, right. you know, have babies right. all over the place. And right. I would be held accountable. Right. If this person is claiming that every single one of these cats and kittens are hers, right. then she is mo responsible to vaccinate these animals. Right. So and, I would right. like to see a resolution with that too. Yeah. And, um, and, and allow the rescue, I mean, Brass, um, Brass City has been well right. behind me with and this. And I think what you said that uh, we can't do anything or the town can't do anything without their permission. So there's a... It's a fight. It is. It is. It's it is the fight. fight, and they have the rights. And sometimes those rights just spill on to everybody else's rights, and spill on to animals' rights, and right. it's it's a horrible so thing. So, if the state um, animal controls tell me that each town, their AC can make an ordinance where, where it's concerning cats and dogs and okay. um, leash laws and stuff well, like we'll that, definitely, can we'll, we we'll definitely we'll look that? into that. We'll definitely look into that. Okay. That's that's a that, that's a, that's a fix that okay. you know we can change it in ordinance if it needs to be fixed. Okay. Uh, excuse Could me. I uh, our you vice chair wants to have has a question. Yeah. Maria. Is there some state health regulation that can help us here? That, can we get a hold of that the state would be health, the health department? department to determine? I believe he's been there. And the health department has the, been. The, the Torrington uh, health department was contacted, and they said there was nothing they could do about yeah. it. But then. They, they also talked to the state um, animal control. So I don't know what happened there either. Okay. So well, I mean, it sounds just, like it needs a little more attention. It needs a lot of attention. It but does. I, do and I, pre some, I appreciate you coming. That, so, you know, it, but it's, is there someone I can give this paperwork to? It just it states, no, I can re reprint this. It's, okay. It tells you everything about the diseases that these cats Why have. Why don't you give that to me and I'll make sure the appropriate people okay. get it. And we'll get more copies. And I would imagine. Where's the chair? Yeah. Just a little more information on this particular case. Thank you. These people are elderly yeah. and they have serious health problems and it's been very difficult for them and we've been trying to work with them. Yeah. I, the cats are a new thing. The, for, Dave's for issue with, with, as far as having a stroke just happened recently. Dave's been very capable of doing things on his own up until this point. So and this he, has been going on for a long time. Dave comes up to our yards. Every Tuesday night, he goes through my garbage when he could, all right, to, to grab cans. He does it to every neighbor up and down the street. He stops by and talks to us all the time before he had the stroke. So, no, there, it, it, he wasn't not capable of handling this because he, he's all day. He was fine. His wife has issues, yes, but Dave was fine. What is he? Stroke. Is he fine now? No, he, no, he's, he had a stroke. Well, well strokes, are, there's, a, no, there's, no, there's he, degrees he, of strokes. So yeah, yeah, no, we, he's we, not. We've seen him once in the last he's month. He's not driving. He's not okay, all right. that's, doing that's any of that. Okay. He, no, right so now, he, definitely he, is, yeah, so his definitely ability. Issue now. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Huh? Al Mickle, 95 Woodvine Avenue. Um, I read the minutes. And a lot of my statements were missing from the minutes. So when you get to the point in the, where you're going to accept the minutes, I would suggest you uh, hold off on that until the minutes can be completed and updated with my remarks. Thank you. Oh. That must be the one that where you called me stupid. <laughs> I'm going to left that out. <laughs> But that's uh, okay. I, I would understand that, Tom, but I didn't call you stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, town council. I'm Chris Donston. I live at 370 okay. Hinman Road. Thank you. Um, I'm a police officer for the town of Watertown and currently the vice president of our union. Uh -huh. Steve Skronsky, who's our union president, was able to attend tonight and asked that I come in his uh, place. I'm here tonight to represent the union and to express the union body's concern over an appropriation of money, approximately uh, $23,900, to be transferred from the general fund to the police department budget to hire a certified officer. It is our understanding that later in this meeting, the members of the town council will be discussing and voting on this topic. There are several reasons that you as council members should consider before discussing and placing your votes. 
With the passing of the most recent budget, the police department was allocated the funds to hire three entry-level officers and two certified officers, both all desperately needed. We have th three certified officers that apply for the two openings. Per the Police Officer Standards and Training Council, certified officers are allowed to transfer between departments within the state of Connecticut, given the fact that that officer will pass the same tests given to any entry-level officer. Over the past few years, police departments have been losing these certified officers to other departments due to better insurance plans, pensions, and other benefits. Because of this, POST has established guidelines for officers that are looking to transfer prior to their two-year certification date. The department that is losing the certified officer can charge the receiving department a fee to cover any training costs for that officer that were occurred during the officer's time on the job up to two years. With that being said, a Connecticut Police Department is asking for $41,000 to cover the cost of training for a certified officer that is looking to transfer from that department to the Watertown Police Department. The other two certified officers that have applied for the position come from other departments that are not requiring any money whatsoever. I'm sure, as you all may know, the Watertown Police Department building is old and outdated. I can think of many things that $41,000 could be spent on, such as newer radar units to conduct speed enforcement, better service plans for our three license plates readers that some aren't even working, and it's, uh, possibly a safer holding area for officers, just to name a few. With the age of technology amongst us, everything we do is done electronically. Better laptops in our cruisers and additional computers within the police department alone would allow us to be more productive and proactive as a police department. Since the spring of 2018, the officers of the Watertown Police Department have, not been, working, have been working without a contract with the town. We have been actively negotiating with the town for a new contract, but are repeatedly told by town members that the town does not have the money to give us competitive wages increases or many of the other things we asked for. It's difficult to understand that we can't negotiate a contract, but can still consider spending $41,000. In conclusion, we ask you to reconsider spending $41,000 to hire a certified police officer when we could hire two certified at no cost. $41,000 is a lot of money. We feel the money could be better used within the department to raise morale and provide the current officers the necessary tools to keep the citizens of this great town safe while still understanding our staffing level. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No? no. Hearing none? Uh, I have a motion. Motion to accept the minutes of uh, June 17, 2019. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of June 17, 2019's regular meeting. Is there any changes or uh, exceptions? Um, Chair, comments from L. Okay, David so we're going to uh, I can re -listen to the just look at it. Okay. Okay, and then uh, uh, give it to us uh, in our next ne next month. Okay. How do we have another month? Huh? Okay. So we will table that. To a chair. The changes are, are being made or? Pardon me? I didn't understand. Postponed to the next meeting. Postpone to the next to meeting. The next She's going to look at them. Oh. She has to look at the minutes and see what if she missed and what she missed. Okay, Chairman's report. Oh, there was a question about our uh, um, town hall and uh, annex about what we're going to do with it last the last meeting. I've given that to the uh, chairman of our facilities committee subcommittee, Case Duplissy, and that that uh, that committee will be uh, addressing those two properties. Uh, I have three letters. Uh, one letter, uh, Jeff Damaris has resigned from the Commission on Aging. Uh, Michael Genovese resigned from uh, Conservation Inland and Wetland Agency. And I have a, law from, uh, a letter from our, uh, our, our, our attorney, uh, Paul Jessel, about the request uh, submitted by Catherine Kamara. Um, and without any objection, they'll be put into the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of good things to report on. Um, our medical, our health fund, we ended the year with uh, a $300,000 surplus, which will remain in the health fund for expenses for this year. Also, our members' equity distribution from KERMA was $25,519 this year, which is the biggest check that I've seen since we've, I've been town manager. That's a, a basically a rebate for uh, savings and in insurance. Also, our annual audit has begun and it should continue through uh, December 31st when it's due. Thank you. Subcommittees. Uh, Lou, please, Lou, coming in. No. Anybody? Subcommittees? <laughs> Jonathan? Excuse me. Okay, then we will, we will move on. Um, 
Can I have a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss pending litigation regarding a claim concerning the hiring for the position of fire marshal and deputy fire marshal. Attendees will be the town manager, the town attorney Paul Jessel, attorney Ryan McCone, and the members of the town council that are present. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Stay. Okay. Go ahead to clear the room.
hot out there. It's nice and cool in here. Weird. It was, it's great in here. The hallway was very warm. Huh, we lost some people. Okay, we are now out of executive session. I'd like to call, call the meeting back to order. Uh, I guess A. Motion. I make a motion to settle the claim concerning the hiring for the position of the fire marshal and deputy fire marshal with Anthony Gudritis. I have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I am opposed. Abstain. Whoa. Uh, can we raise for uh, four? All in favor? One. So everybody in knows. Favor first. Yeah, right. That's what I said. Okay. Uh, one opposed, one abstain? One abstain. Okay. There you go. Okay. We'll get that squared away. Okay. Okay. B. I move to appoint Mr. Robert DeSena, 80 Parkman Street, Oakville, as a member of the Watertown Park and Recreation Commission for a term to expire January 31st, 2020. The appointment is to fill the unexpired term of Robert Kane. Second. Uh, any discussion? Second. No, you said that already. <laughs> yeah. Any discussion? You didn't hear me the first time. I did. That's why I said any discussion. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Motion passes. I make a motion to appoint Luigi Cavallo, Jr., 97 Joshua Town Road, Watertown, as a regular member of the Conservation Inland Wetland Commission for a term to expire January 31st, 2020. The appointment is to fill the unexpired term of Michael Genovese. Have a second? Second. Any, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Motion passes. C. I move to authorize the town manager to enter and execute on behalf of an agreement with the Watertown Housing Authority to terminate two existing agreements concerning municipal services and payment in lieu of taxes. Do have a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, through the chair. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Paul Jessel, town attorney. Um, what, what this agreement is about is, is uh, the, the agreement itself is pretty self-explanatory. If you read it, it's kind of a litany of what occurred from the 70s onward with regard to our elderly housing projects. Uh, under the terms of those agreements, the town of Watertown was supposed to perform certain functions at the three elderly, well, two elderly housing complex. The third one, the newest one, uh, was never included. Uh, and in turn, the elderly housing um, projects were supposed to give the town of Water, Watertown some uh, pilot payments in lieu of taxes. Um, it worked okay for a number of years. Uh, however, in the past several years, the town has not undertaken to do a lot of the work that the agreements required. And as a result, the housing authority has not made their pilot payments. Um, so we've had discussions between the housing authority and the town and because all of the funding, the bonding has been paid in full, the housing authority is uh, self-sufficient at this point. Um, it was felt that the, the uh, best option was to just terminate the requirement that the town perform all these services, included paving, uh, a lot of work within the house, elderly housing complexes. Um, and, in, and in turn, uh, they would not pay us any pilot. Um, the, the only two things that the town agreed that it will continue to do, um, one is to mow and plow around and on the sidewalks along Buckingham Street, which we've been doing anyway. Uh, and the second is in conjunction with the Watertown Fire District with the complex behind Hemingway Park School, we agreed to give discounted uh, water and sewer rates uh, to the elderly housing complexes. Um, I'm recommending that we go forward with this agreement. I think it makes the most sense, uh, certainly for the town. Um, 
I think the housing authority agrees. So I think it's a, a good thing for both, kind of a win-win. Any discussion? Questions? I'm Jonathan? I um, can assume since the services really haven't been provided that we were supposed to over the years, we haven't received payments from them over the years, that this agreement is pretty much just kind of changing the wording so that what the agreement says is actually what's being done versus all the stuff that both sides are supposed to do but weren't doing. It's just kind of... Yeah, frankly, it kind of formalizes what the facts have been for the last few years, yes. And roughly how many years? I, I don't remember, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Five years, yeah. So, it, you know, this has, been a, this has been an issue for a long time. Um, it's actually an issue that the, uh, that the housing authority brought to the town uh, before our current town manager was even here. So it's, it's been an ongoing issue for quite a while. Is there a line item in our budget for our housing authority? Yeah. I don't no. believe so. Yeah. No, we do not. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just curious. So. Revenue. For revenue. Huh? For revenue. For revenue. revenue. Yeah, but we haven't been getting it. I used the budget for revenue, but not any longer. For revenue, but we don't get it. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Mary. Do the residents uh, the housing authority pay their own water bills? Or does the housing authority pay the water bill? Right. So if the residents were paying it, I would be totally supportive of the <coughs> discounted rate. But if the housing authority is paying it, why should they get a break when other organizations or school departments or the town well, keep Doesn't in mind that, that these are subsidized rates that people that are in these uh, elderly housing developments right. uh, pay only well, a percentage based on their income. Right. Um, and if, if at some point the complex be, is not able to support itself, that would then become an issue for the town. So I think, I think it, it's, it's not a huge discount. It's okay. just a discounted rate. It's just that the rates are really high <clears throat> for everyone. Well, not that's as high another, as water. That's another. Wants that's another that. issue. Right. <laughs> what about paving the streets in that in the particular? Uh, I mean, are we going to? No, are they, the, we walk the, away. The housing from that authority also? takes care of their own plowing. Okay. They take care of their own sidewalks. They take care of their own okay. uh, pavement. They Except take care Buckingham. of everything within their borders. Again, okay. the only thing we do there's a sidewalk along Buckingham that yeah. we plow, right. and there's some we we mow every once there's in a while strip. the grass around that sidewalk. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Stain? Stain. Motion, pa motion passes. Uh, 7 0 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve a bid waiver for the lease purchase of a 2015 Greenmaster Triplex Greens Mower and a Toro Sand Pro 3040 with associated equipment for a total cost of $41,769 and 74 cents for the Crestbrook Park Golf Course. The equipment to be least purchased through turf products. Do have a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I got a question. Lisa Cruz, Lisa? Yep. That, is that who you're gonna ask, Dave? Well, I was just wondering if this oh. was in the budget. That's well, we'll figure it out. You want me to answer that? <laughs> There's $10,000 for mower replacement in the budget, and this is a $9,600 lease payment for four years. Right. Okay, perfect. That answers. So then, yes. Yes, it's in the budget. <laughs> Any other yeah. questions? Yeah. What's a lease purchased? Um, at the, the end of the 49 months, um, we'll be able to buy the machines for a dollar. Oh, okay. So. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Pose. Stay. Thanks, Lise. Fortune passes. C. I move to approve an appropriation in the amount of $4,337.06 from the general fund for the reimbursement of overtime for the ticket or click it enforcement. Second. Funds have been reimbursed through a grant. You have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Stain. Motion passes. I move to approve an appropriation in the amount of $19,513.83 from the general fund for the reimbursement of overtime 
for the distracted driving enforcement funds that have been reimbursed through a grant. That was, hmm, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Morton passes. G. I move to approve an appropriation in the amount of $23,900 from the general fund for the fee associated with hiring of a certified officer from another municipality. So a second? Second. Discussion? I, I believe the chief of police is here. He can... Chief? Sure. He, he's the hiring agency, am I correct? Uh, yes. He is the man. Uh, you'll see I attached a memo to your uh, packet, I believe, memo <coughs> 1865. Uh, which outlines I'm in the process of hiring three officers. Uh, I have five people on the bench. Uh, two of them are certified officers. Three are not. I have to fill three spots. The One of the certified officers has completed their mandated commitment to the agency they're with. The other has not, which would require us to pay 50% of their training costs. In order to do that, I would need the appropriation that I'm asking for tonight in the amount of $23,900. Now, the Academy in Waterbury starts August 8th, so I, I would need that commitment from you tonight for that appropriation. And that would pay a portion of the training costs. We're only required to pay 50%. Uh, the additional training costs I can make up uh, in my budget. Questions? I sure. see here that this would be a, a net savings to the town of, looks like, 21000 Can you just touch on that? I... Th that, that savings is in the form of benefits. Let, let me explain. The, the, ma the money is still paid out to the officer, but we're going to have the officer on the road in just 30 days as opposed to nine months. So the officer is now producing as opposed to collecting that salary for nine months and we're not getting anything back from the officer. That's mostly in, in benefits. I see. But Eight it is a savings. Okay. Eight months worth of benefits. Okay. Right. To the chair. Um, is there any estimate as far as any savings for overtime that having the additional officer on the road sooner <laughs> than... Well, well, certainly there would be a savings in overtime. It's hard to quantify what that savings would be, but certainly it would have an impact. Uh, an extra officer on the road, I would have to pay out less overtime. It would be hard for me to give you an actual dollar amount. But in the same process here, I want to put an officer in Swift Junior High in SRO, and I'll be taking one off the road to do that. So by hiring this two additional certified officers, uh, that would fill that spot as well. Okay. I got a question. Okay. John, you, after you hire these three people, that'll be, you'll be fully. Uh, I would be up to 40 sworn. Uh, I would have, I have one in the Merritt Academy, the State Police Academy right now. Uh, I just hired a certified officer who's on. And if I hire these two certifieds, I'll just have one in the, in the Waterbury Academy. So I'll have two in the Academy that'll be ready to go in about nine more months. And I'll have three out on the road within a month. Um, um, that you'll be you'll I'll be fully staffed at 40 sworn to your generosity and giving me three officers right. in the budget this year. Okay, to reiterate, this will be a this will technically be a savings for the town for at twenty one thousand five hundred twenty one twenty nine dollars. We can say that as a um, uh, as a fact or as, as much as you can anyway. Yeah, that's you're, right. That's right. the officer will be producing. Okay. All right. They're collecting the money, they'll be producing. All right. I mean, yeah, yeah. as long as it's uh, saving the town, the taxpayers' money versus it costing them, it'll save them in costs and save them with uh, another person on the road. Well, I'm saving some money from the police academy and some uniforms right. for the academy in my budget, and that's why I will be able to make up the rest, the okay. rest of it. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Stain? Motion passes. H. H. I move the resolution authorizing tax refunds. I have a second. 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 Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Stain? Motion passes. I have a motion to adjourn. Oh, oh, public participation.
Anyone wants to come up? Al, I'm sorry, Al. Of course. <laughs> you talked about a bid waiver for um, the Crestbrook Golf Course, and you said it's been budgeted for. Is it budgeted for in the Crestbrook account, yes. or yes. is it? It is in the, the enterprise fund. Yes. Enterprise oh. fund. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Hearing none. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Motion. Meeting adjourned. That wasn't bad.